In all our previous episodes, we've spoken about nutrition and other aspects of food and eating. But what about exercise? This is something that a lot of us get wrong. There are so many myths, there are so many things we don't know about exercise. Do we do cardio? Do we not do cardio? Is it bad for you? And what exactly is resistance training and why is it that we at Fitter talk so much about it? All this and more in the latest episode of the Fitter Podcast. Do you exercise? <laughs> yes, I do. Okay. Uh, there's a lot of questions in the community that are coming about about exercise. Uh, I mean, just maybe for our audience also, I'll just tell them. We recently started a broadcast channel on Instagram. And people can come in there and ask as many questions and you personally answer them. So in case you want to ask, ask questions to JC, Instagram is one place. You can also ask questions on YouTube. And we'll definitely take them up in the show. And that's what I was coming to. We have taken a few questions. And a lot of these questions are about exercise, particularly resistance training, because that's something that you've spoken about from day one. Yes. yes. Here's the very first question, in fact. This one is from Pragya Agarwal. And that's something that a lot of people would also want to know. In simple terms, what exactly is resistance training? And what is the difference between strength training and resistance training? So, there are basically three terminologies which are often used interchangeably. Okay. Mm -hmm. So, you have strength training, you have resistance training and then you also have weight training. Weight training, yeah. Okay. In a normal setting, all of these three mean the same thing. Okay. Once we get specific, then they mean different things. But for a layman, for general public, strength mm -hmm. training, weight training, resistance training are often used interchangeably and they right. mean the same thing. Okay. Okay. Now, let's start about resistance training. Okay. Resistance towards anything. So whenever you pull something against resistance, against any force, mm. against any, um, let's say you're pushing against a wall, yeah. the wall is offering you resistance, you know, right. so that is basically the wall offering you resistance and you're trying to push, that's resistance training. Similarly, if you pick up a heavy object from the ground, the object on the ground is uh, putting up resistance, right? right. And you're trying to uh, pull it up, right. lift it up. There's also, you're working against gravity as well. Against gravity, yeah. right? So any sort of movement, which could be a push movement, which could be a pull movement, um, when you do it against any sort of resistance. Now, this resistance could be an external object, could be a wall, could be an external weight, or your own body, hmm. for that matter, would be referred to as resistance training. Okay. Okay. Now, often when we do resistance training, there are going to be some adaptations in your body, hmm. which primarily translate in the form of increased strength. For example, if you are doing let's say push-ups, okay, when you do first push-up, you'd probably not be able to do it if you are doing it for the first time. Then yeah. after a few uh, weeks or maybe months, you'd be able to do 10, 20 push-ups easily. Hmm. So what has happened? Your strength has gone up as right. a result of doing resistance training. So it is also referred to as strength, strength training. Strength training, because you build strength, obviously. Yes. Now, a lot of people go to the gym hmm. and they don't lift their own body but they lift external weights, which is the plates, the barbells, the dumbbells, right? right? And that's why it's also referred to as weight training. And yes, uh, apart from this, yeah. strength is also a skill. So if you also want to develop certain skills, which is like doing specific movements, mm -hmm. for example, let's say you want to do a uh, Kipling pull-up or you want to do, let's say, uh, uh, you know, a couple of chin-ups or a planche or HSPUs, mm -hmm. those are specific skills. Mm. Okay, so th that could be also an end goal for a lot of people. Right. So I think you've already answered my next question, which is what are the benefits of uh, strength training or resistance training? A, you spoke about building muscle or repairing muscle. B, you spoke about strength, improving strength, which is also a skill, also improving yeah. a certain skill. Any other benefits that we can... They can improve get? your bone density. Yeah. Right. So the strength training is basically uh, insurance against future joint related problems. Besides, I think uh, rice strength training also provides sufficient stimulus to um, even your uh, skin tissues, um, ligaments, tendons. Um, and because it's also giving stimulus to your skin, mm -hmm. it also kind of keeps you young. Wonderful. Okay, I like that. Yes. I like that part. So, obviously, there are a lot of reasons why somebody should start resistance training or strength training, right? Let's say I'm a rank newbie. 
yeah i've never lifted weights before i've never done any kind of uh, weight training what are the first what is, can you tell us maybe what is the step by step regime that i can follow where do i start what do i work towards how do i make it from let's say you know what is the journey that i should map out for strength training right so strength training is a fundamental it's 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 a foundation for good health so it doesn't matter if you play a particular sport it doesn't matter if you run marathons everybody irrespective of what age what gender uh they belong to mm. everybody must do strength training this is the bottom line like irrespective of anything you must do strength training at least 3 to 4 times in a week okay okay um strength training rise strength training right so if you are able to go to the gym uh, clearly there are machines which can assist you um so let's say you know your trainer in the gym would be able to plan out some journey for you or maybe you can download fitter app get a free training plan right. and follow that plan it will also show you but let's say you don't have access to the gym what you can do is you can do a basic warm up which could be 1 to 2 minutes of stretches maybe uh, on the spot jogging just yeah. get your heart rate up and then after that you can start with some compound movements which could be basic push ups pull ups body weight squats if you can't do any of these exercises there are alternatives which is like you can do knee push ups okay okay you can do chair squats which is like just sit on a chair get up sit on a chair get up right if you can't do um if you don't have a pull up bar or you can't have don't have something to hang just try to plank hmm. you know or do a, a like try throwing something on the ground that will also work here let us must right? the idea is that you get started hmm. you know and over a period of time maybe when you have um you got in some basic experience by a pair of dumbbells once you buy a pair of dumbbells then you have infinite possibilities you mm-hmm. can do um you know uh, lateral raises you can do shoulder press you can do walking lunges with dumbbells mm-hmm. and all of these exercises you can do with um like something else too there was a time during covid when people were using all sorts of weights but mm-hmm. i'm saying investing in a pair of dumbbells is not a bad idea okay. a pair of dumbbells a yoga mat you have like literally a 4 by 4 place maybe a 6 by 6 place uh-huh. and you can work out right right so that's where you get started yes. start with body weight exercises maybe invest in a dumbbell or resistance bands or something like that yes. and event and you don't even need to go to no, the gym you don't if you have these things you don't you don't need to go to the gym yeah. uh but if you are able to go to the gym sure yeah. go ahead you'll a question get about gym you said you know uh, you have a lot of machines in the gym are machine exercises better than let's say free weight dumbbell or barbell exercises as a newcomer as a newbie where do you start which is better uh right so again there's no right or wrong some people definitely feel that machines are better because they provide you that assistance and sometimes when you are not able to um you know feel the right kind of motion machines are there because then they restrict your like movement movement mm. and because the movement is restricted a chance for you to do it wrong kind of goes down right so so that way machines definitely help but like i said we are not executing any complex movements here we are not doing you know tricep uh, raise or we are not doing skull crushers here mm-hmm. you know so there is no need for complexity a squat is basically a very basic exercise everybody who's um uh, who's ever grown up yeah and has been a kid especially in india with a indian loose yeah <laughs> uh, you know how to squat yeah right similarly a knee push up is not rocket science mm-hmm. all you have to do is just get down on your knees Uh, go down on the floor and try to lift your body using the hands mm. that's it that's mm. knee push ups mm. and all of these exercises are easily available on youtube you can download on fitter app uh, you have very high quality videos showing how to execute them with voice instructions and everything so it's not that you can't learn the form mm. it basically takes 5 to 10 minutes to learn all these exercises that's about it that's and it. simple exercises and in fact i think we should tell our uh, viewers that in case there is ever any confusion about how to perform an exercise the fitter app has a complete thousand library 1000 plus. plus workout videos or rather yes. exercise videos step by step you can just go and check it out and very helpful very so helpful just use people. the search yeah. on top type a name of any exercise or body part and you'll see thousands of exercises mm mm-hmm. Now that we've spoken about exercise, of course, nutrition goes hand in hand with it. Yeah. You're new to working out. How much protein do you need, and what exactly, you know, how should you take care of your nutrition needs? We have to dispel this notion that 
workout and protein are somehow related i've said this before mm. again i don't want to talk about protein in this particular one because people will think hey i'm not working out i don't need protein mm. everybody needs protein whether you work out or not protein is not just for building muscles right protein is needed for your overall growth right and overall well being but if you start exercising and doing resistance training do your protein requirements increase protein requirements will only increase if you are an athlete or let's say there's a lot of wear and tear which is happening for beginners i don't think there's going to be any change okay. and again do the protein needs increase even if you're an athlete that is a decision that your coach should be in a much better position to assess and recommend as a beginner i don't think you need so to you should not that. assume that just because i go to gym i have to start taking more extra protein, protein. Extra no protein. absolutely not none of that no okay what else should i be careful about when it comes to nutrition if i'm working again out? not because you're working out in general you should keep your hydration in check 2.5 to 3 liters of water that's the minimum turnover in your body hmm. in males and female which means that your body body on an average loses hmm. this much water every single day and so you should be able to replenish this much water in your body so hmm. 2.5 hmm. to 3 liters of water is the minimum if you're working out and exhausting yourself you're probably losing more a um, good way is to figure out if your urine is dark yellow or pale yellow or you know transparent mm. um that way you can gauge that's a good idea great nutrition hydration lifting weights or body weights that's what yeah. we've covered so yes. far uh and injuries sleep. is something that a lot of people are worried about in fact i've seen people you know get really scared when they see these youtube or you know instagram reels where somebody's tearing a pectoral muscle or their shoulder suddenly hanging off yeah. <laughs> their arm yeah. and that's what they are worried about so a word about injuries and how to prevent them look injuries are part and parcel mm. okay in fact i have a shoulder injury right now which i got because i'm doing boxing yeah and obviously it's a overuse injury and i've like it's been one week i'm in rehab and it's perfectly fine so next week onwards i'll resume my training injuries are part and parcel i probably have at least um been injured maybe 100 times if not more okay Okay, but the thing is, your body gets used to of it, and you get better at recovery. Mm-hmm. So people should not get scared of injuries. They should understand that everybody, even the best of the best players, even the people with the most immaculate form, will get injured. You mm-hmm. know, we talk about Sachin Tendulkar or Ronaldo. Every athlete goes through injuries. Okay, so injuries is fine. Injuries will happen. You know, there's things that we can do to fix them. You fix them, and you're back to normal. Mm-hmm. Problem happens when you have never got an injury. and you get an injury for the first time ha uh, yeah because then your body is not used to of you know carrying out the recovery the same thing happens when people ask me hey jay she you are so fit don't you get sick i'm like sure i do get sick i got covid three times but mm-hmm. where most of the people are recovering in two months or three months it took me four days to recover from covid mm-hmm. right so in a similar manner when i get injured my recovery timeline is much much shorter compared to people who don't get injured right right what about the role of let's say proper form and technique in injury prevention i see a lot of people say form and technique are so important you know that's the way to prevent an injury that's the way to not just prevent injuries but also get the best workout your take on this do you like need to be a science whiz to understand thermodynamics and physics not at all start working look form and technique are important no doubt about that but as a beginner you cannot expect somebody to have a proper form Hmm. but you can tell the person to not do ego lifting what okay? is ego lifting ego lifting is lifting weights which are beyond your capability okay uh, more often than not the injuries are not because of poor form or technique but because the load or the impact is too much you're lifting more than you can think about it if you have a car hmm. a car is driving at let's say 6 miles an hour yeah and it bumps into something large the damage would not be substantial hmm. but if the same car is traveling at let's say 60 miles an hour the damage is going to be pretty substantial why because the speed changes the amount of like the impact is much much higher yeah okay so in a similar manner when you are even doing something without proper form um if the weight is small the chances of injuries are minimum hmm. but even if you are doing something with the right form and technique the chances of injury go up exponentially so more than form and technique it's important to understand the load that you are carrying mm-hmm. that load is going to be the prime determinant of how prone you are to injury mm-hmm. and then comes form and technique right even with the perfect form and technique if the load is 
super heavy, the chances of injury are very much there. And most of the people don't need to attempt PRs unless until you are a power lifter, mm. unless until you are doing some sort of sports. Again, I keep talking about how sports are not healthy. Mm. You have to be healthy enough to be you able to You need to play. talk a bit about this because you keep saying that you know sports are not healthy. Yeah. You know, I think that's a slightly controversial statement because people think, Are I play cricket, that means I am fit. How can you say that, you know, cricket doesn't make me healthy? No, sports are sport. Exercise is exercise. When you do exercise, you get healthier. And when you get healthier, you are fit enough to play a sport. Ah. The two are very different. Do hmm. not think that running a 21 uh, kilometer marathon is going to make you healthy. No, hmm. you should be healthy enough to be able to sustain the stress that hmm. you uh, that your body goes through while running 21 kilometers of marathon. Hmm. And you are not getting fit by running 21 kilometers of marathon. Mm. You're not. Mm. You are getting fit through a different process, which is focusing on resistance training, eating the right kind of food, sleeping, mm. enough hydration. That's what's making you healthy. And this health combined with the right kind of insights, right kind of training, then you're expressing through sports. So sports is an expression of your health. Right. Not necessarily the input. Got it. Got it. Uh, a lot of people actually, you know, uh, on the group are asking about exercise selection. Particularly, you know, there's one guy, Mohammed Rayan, who's like, who really wants to know what your biceps routine is. He's obviously mm. seen your arms. So, uh, is there something like a cookie cutter, basic exercise regime that you can give people or do we need to like, you know, tailor make it to every single person? See, in my case, what has happened is my life is a series of accidents and decisions which which were obviously wrong at the time, but they turned out to be blessing in disguise. Mm. I was a stubby kid. <laughs> I was I was short. I was um, because I was 14, right? I had, and I was still growing. Mm -hmm. I could not do pull-ups. I could not even like, you know, jump high enough to grab the pull-up bar. Yeah. And the only thing I could do was just do dumbbells. <laughs> okay. And so every time <laughs> I'll go to the gym, yeah. I could not do any other exercise except for dumbbells. So for a very long period of time, mm. I was just doing dumbbells. And eating spinach. No, I mean, food-wise, so again, <laughs> spinach, paneer and eggs and all those things. <laughs> yeah. But for a very long period of time, I was training largely my arms. Mm. And I thought that was good, like, because arms were looking good. And like, I would go and do, you know, bench press and everything. But those were not my favorite exercise. Mm. My arms were like favorite exercise. And because I'd wear t-shirts and arms would look good. And, you know, people would say, hi, hey, you're looking fit. Yeah, so that's what happened. But it's when I um, went to Mumbai, mm. um, LN Tin Foot again, that's when I took my t-shirt off and I said, guys are like, you have no back, you have no chest, you have no legs. <laughs> that's when I realized, okay, I have to work out these muscles too. Right? So I stopped focusing on my arms, but I was still getting them sufficient stimulus because every other exercise involves arm movements. Right. right. right? So if somebody asked me, JC, are you still training your arms? I haven't trained my arms in the last three years. Like not specifically your arms. I don't do you... have an arms day. Okay. I do not train my arms at all. But they get stimulus anyways. Mm -hmm. What is your favorite exercise? Uh, which body part do you enjoy training the most? Uh, that's a very hard question. I do what's necessary. I don't think in terms of good and bad. I just do what's necessary. Okay. Another very big question that's coming up mm -hmm. is, of course, if you're talking about resistance training and you know all that, people start asking about cardio. You know, there is online, especially there is a raging debate about cardio versus resistance training. And uh, in fact, uh, Aditya Swami has asked a question. What's the recommendation of cardio versus weight training in a week? Uh, you've spoken about the importance of weight training, but where does cardio fit into this equation of making you healthy? Cardio is not necessary. Mm. I'm going to get a lot of hate, but Remember, I said the reason why people do cardio is because they've been told, hey, do cardio because it's going to help you make, uh, you know, lose weight. Mm. Because cardio burns fat. Mm. Without understanding that, yes, cardio definitely burns fat mm. when you are doing it. But it also has a fat sparing effect when you are resting. To explain mm. this, let me, let me kind of um, go slightly into detail. So you yeah. know about aerobic and anaerobic mm. training. Basically, when we breathe, we take in a lot of air, mm. we take in oxygen, 
and this oxygen then goes into your lungs and then from mm. there the heart mixes up with nutrition and reaches out to cells. In the cells, we have substrates. A lot of people know about uh, fatty acids and glucose, right? These are the primary substrates which we utilize. Yeah. Our muscles have both of these substrates. Muscles have intramuscular triglycerides, fatty acids, and they also have glucose. Now, the thing about these cells is they have a powerhouse, which is the mi mitochondria, right? And mitochondria can burn both glucose as well as fat okay. in the presence of oxygen. Okay, but when the oxygen is low, then it cannot uh, burn fatty acids or glucose because it needs oxygen. Mitochondria needs oxygen. Mm. But there is certain uh, structure outside of the cell which is capable of burning glucose even in the absence of mm. oxygen. Mm. So cytoplasm is what we refer it to. And uh, in cytoplasm, it can burn small amounts of glucose mm. in the absence of oxygen. So when you are training, basically you are training either in the presence of oxygen where mm -hmm. you are getting sufficient amount of oxygen on a continual basis or you are training in an anaerobic environment where let's say you are not able to get sufficient amount of oxygen. So when you are getting sufficient amount of oxygen, that's referred to as aerobic training. When you are not getting sufficient amount of oxygen, it's referred to as anaerobic training. Any exercise where you are, it, it becomes difficult to breathe kind of becomes an anaerobic training. Okay, and that's the exercise where primarily the fuel that's been burned inside the body is glucose. We also call it glycolytic training. Okay. Okay. And let's say if you are doing cardio, mm -hmm. you can do miles and miles of cardio and people are breathing, right? Even though they are like, <laughs> but they are continuously getting oxygen. That's how they can run 21 miles. But the minute you do, let's say a bench press, you cannot do a set for five minutes. Right. You know, you, because it becomes incrementally harder to breathe. Mm. So that's when the training becomes glycolytic. Now, the thing about any exercise, be it cardio or be it um, any kind of aerobic training or anaerobic training, it's kind of a stress for the body. Okay, it's not chronic stress, it's the right kind of stress. But your body has certain adaptations to any kind of stress. The body follows a very simple principle of depletion and supercompensation. This principle says, at, at times of stress, if my body is losing something, at times of rest, the body will try and recover the same thing. So, when a lot of people do cardio, uh, like initially there will be some glucose burning, but over a period of time, sustained oxygen, they will burn a lot of fat. So, people are right in saying that cardio burns fat. Mm. You know, they are burning fat. But because it's also a stress, body is recognizing the stress, what is the body going to do when that person is resting? It's going to spare fat mm. and it's going to improve glucose oxidation. Okay. Because the body is going to anticipate that this person is doing marathon and he needs fat. Mm. Mm. So to sustain that long correct. activity. So instead of burning fat while resting, it is going to start storing fat while resting. Ah. So any activity that you do that promotes fat burning, uh, it is going to have a fat sparring effect while resting and that is not good for you. Mm. Because that makes it very, very difficult for you to build muscles. Mm. It also makes difficult for people to lose weight. Right. So where, but let's say a person does want to do cardio because a lot of people... Uh, then do it. Yeah. Then, then you don't care about anything. So look, if you want to do cardio, mm. if your primary goal is not to lose weight, lose fat, build muscles, go ahead and do it. Uh, Omar has the same question. In fact, uh, two people have the same question. Is adding cardio with strength training good? Should you do cardio and you know weight training on the same day? Does one come before the other? I think there's still a lot of confusion yes. about this. So, like I said, because the two training modalities are very different and they have different adaptations in the body. Mm. You know, body responds differently to strength training and body re responds differently to any kind of aerobic training. Hmm. Uh, so, there is going to be an interference effect, you know, okay. because, because now body is confused. Hey, is this person going to do cardio or is he going to do weight training? So, what happens is you derive none of the benefit out of the two. And by benefit, see, cardio is probably just stamina, endurance, nothing else. And it will definitely have like more, uh, it will promote mitochondrial density. But 
weight training promotes mitochondrial efficiency which is even better mm. we don't have to get into it yeah but for the time being uh, you know coming back to the question there's going to be some sort of interference effect and so it's better to separate both of them not do them on the same day or in yes, the same water yes and i'm more worried about the interference effect on the weight training hmm. not the effect of weight training on cardio right so if your primary goal is to build muscles cardio is going to have an adverse effect if you combine cardio with weight training so if your goal is to build muscle build strength do weight training and focus lose on that weight yes yeah and lose weight do yes. weight training cardio if you enjoy doing it you yeah. can do it but on a separate day or at least not in the same workout yes not in the same workout not in the same workout and what you can do instead is you can do hiit because hiit is also glycolytic hmm. so hiit and weight training they are largely similar really so, yes okay Same. because i had in my mind it was like hiit is very similar to cardio no okay see in hiit also it becomes very difficult to breathe yes yes so the primary fuel substrate is going to be glucose because mm. your body cannot burn fatty acids in the absence of air so hiit and strength training mimic the same kind of effect so i think now i understand why nuser whom you've been yeah. coaching is doing hiit and is actually building muscle yeah so hiit and weight training are complementary ah again hiit weight training can you do them both in the same workout yes absolutely you can do them. Yes, yes what follows which 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 do you focus on first um hiit is going to be slightly more difficult mm. so you can start with hiit and then finish off with weight training but let's say um so you can also do alternate on alternate days depends on what your primary goal is mm, mm, mm. okay if you are looking to build serial a serious uh, strength um uh, then you should lift your weights first so whichever mm. is more difficult for you do it first and then do the other one i think you've really cleared up a lot of doubts that people had about resistance training now i want to address certain myths so sure. because they've been around for donkey's years and they refuse to die but you know how much is a donkey's ear not a donkey's ear like you know thousands of ears is mm. what i meant <laughs> yeah that's donkey's ears i'm not i'm not referring to these ears like i know dog ears like seven year um you know seven human so ears donkey takes a longer time to understand things so it just feels like it's a very long time oh so it's not really there's yeah. no such thing there's as a donkey no, ear no, no, no. okay it's just that oh god not again here we go again <laughs> it makes that sense okay one very big myth jc is that women should not do resistance training they should not lift weights because apparently it will make them bulky or manly i know it's a pet peeve this myth has been around for such a long time and but i see, want to women have it. always been lifting weights you know like just carrying around their babies babies are weights yeah i mean not in the strict strict sense but babies are weights mm. and women lift their babies for such long hours yeah so i'm saying you have been doing resistance training and i think a lot of women don't understand that they already have muscles hello muscles, like humans everyone has muscles everyone yeah. has muscles yeah. without muscles your bones wouldn't move Mm. muscles are what makes your body move without muscles you wouldn't move so when we are talking about building muscles what we are saying is our movement gets better mm. we get better at everything that we do on a regular basis that's what essentially we're referring to yeah those muscles are not going to get huge see i think that's the problem they I've have been will i will they start will they start looking like some kind of bodybuilder no, that only happens when people take drugs steroids without steroids it's simply not possible for somebody to get big enough i've been training for 24 years my weight is 68 kg mm-hmm. i'm not like a freakishly big guy i'm a small guy but i do have good muscle insertions that mm. make my body look more aesthetic what about aesthetic. women who are told that they should lift very light weights because you know otherwise uh, they will lose their femininity doesn't even make sense okay I mean I'm not talking about you go and do your PRs obviously I'm, I'm against you know doing PRs unless until uh, you are like a competitive um athlete mm. you shouldn't do PRs it's not safe but I'm saying hey doing 15 to 20 reps of a decently challenging enough weight that's not gonna turn you into she hulk in fact most of the well toned women out there in the world they do resistance training every single day So I don't know where this myth originated from where it came from mm. it's just a very very stupid myth so women start lifting weights if you're not already yeah and don't yeah. take drugs well that i think <laughs> women men guys girls don't do drugs yeah so as long so. as you're not taking any exogenous steroid yeah 
any exogenous testosterone, you're not going to get bulky. Got it. It's simply not possible. It takes years and years of dedication and patience and, you know, like a proper, proper diet and sufficient amount of protein, hydration to look decent. Bade muscles to dur ki baat hai. Bade muscles to bahut dur ki baat hai. Which brings me to the next myth, uh, which is again about resistance training and individuals. A lot of people think it's only for young and fit people. If you are of a certain age, if you are older, in your 40s or 50s, and you should not be doing this. You should basically take a walking stick and go out and walk. Well, honestly, I feel like if you did resistance training, you would not need that walking stick. Mm. Okay, so think about it. It's important. I'm saying this. And everybody should pay attention to this. If you are taking that walking stick, it's primarily because you did not do resistance training. Mm. If you do resistance training, you would not need that walking stick. And everybody can do resistance training at any age. Whether you're a kid, whether you are an adult, whether you're an old guy in your 70s and 80s, or even if you are like 90s, you can do resistance training. Do under supervision. Yeah. Do under somebody's monitoring. But nobody in this world can come up and say, hey, rice and training should not be done by this person or that person. Mm. It's for everyone. Perfect. Uh, we have already kind of mentioned this, but maybe you could you know, elaborate a little more. The myth that you need an expensive gym equipment in order to get an effective workout. No, no, no. We can work out at home. Nusa is working out at home mm. for the last three months. He's built up decent muscle mass, looking much, much better. Three months. So I don't think, and this was primarily the reason for the whole collab. Like we wanted to dispel so many myths around vegetarian diets, uh, traveling, you know, uh, the whole excuse about I don't have time, yeah. you know, and I don't have access to gym. We're doing that. Mm. And so if somebody like Nosair who's traveling like hundreds of countries and, uh, you know, he's one of the busiest guys on the planet, if he can do it, anybody can do it. And he's not gone to the gym. Mm. He's training at home or wherever. Yeah, he I think lives out of a suitcase most days. <laughs> a bag. A bag, yeah. He wears uh, the same kind of clothes also. So I, I, I figure like he probably carries not more than two or three t shirts. I probably, he probably yeah. had dozens of them. Yeah. And yeah. They look the same, right? Yeah. But maybe he just have hmm, two or three t shirts. Who else do I know that I can say the same thing about who wears the same clothes every day? But see, that's the trick, right? Mm. I, I, I can lie about it. I can mm. tell people, hey, I have 100 t-shirts when in mm. reality, I might just have mm. like 10 t-shirts. Yeah. This actually brings me to the next myth and it's perfect how beautifully it fits in. You wear the same clothes every day. You also do pretty much the same exercises every day. But there is this myth about muscle confusion that you have to change your workout every week. Otherwise, you won't build muscle. Did you take up any kind of hobby as a kid? Physical? No. Like, were you ever interested in music? Music, yes. Music yeah, classes? Yes, yes. Are you any good at it now? Slightly, yeah. How long did you take your music classes for? A couple of years. But I basically kept on playing the chords over and over again. Yeah. yeah. And then you got better at that? I got, I got better. Right. So, it's the same with exercise. If you keep doing the same kind of exercise, you get better at them. Mm. There's no need for muscle confusion. Like, we don't switch from one musical instrument to another musical instrument suddenly out of the blue. Mm. Like, you know, if you want to do more, play tabla one day and then play piano one day, no. Mm. You're not going to get... You have to stick to it. Stick to one thing yeah. long enough so that the synapses are formed and they become permanent. Mm. Otherwise, what about, you know, people keep saying, Are we want variety, we get bored. That, that's a problem. Like, I can't do anything about that problem. Life is boring. Boring is good. Boredom is what yields success. Mm. Success itself is boring. <laughs> I mean, well, like, not once you achieve it. <laughs> no, but it's the same thing. Look, people are looking for excitement. Yeah. And you realize that in all sorts of settings, be it physical, mental, social, and financial, excitement doesn't last. You know, even if you have to grow your money, you put it in a bank, it takes one year to get 6 to 7% um, interest on the money, right? Yeah. So every good thing takes time. And how does it work? Repetition and compounding. It's the same here. You also need to be patient. You need to, you need be, to be doing patient. it every single day. Yes, yes. Imagine if I kept, you know, uh, taking my money from one account to another and just put it in different, different things. I'm not getting benefit out of it. Mm -hmm. You know, people who trade for the longer 
term, they often end up getting much better returns compared to people who trade for shorter terms. You know. So be patient. Don't look for excitement. Yeah. Follow the same routine and just be consistent. With just it. keep following it. Yeah. yeah. Doesn't matter how fast you run in the beginning, but like how how long can you run? Mm. You know, like it doesn't matter if you can put up like hundred percent of your effort in three months. What matters is if you can sustain even fifty percent of that effort for maybe the rest of your life, thirty years, yeah. forty years. Yeah, that's what matters. Yeah, because that's the guy who will end up winning in life or at the gym. Yeah, be the tortoise. So let's say you know we've covered a lot of these aspects. Finally. someone who is just considering to start their resistance training journey but they still have reservations or doubts what are your reservations uh my reservation actually is consistency will i be able to do this for a long enough period of time or not what if you know i get bored of it and i give it up or what but if i don't jadi, see results tell me jadi, seriously what choice do you have you are getting old yeah how old are you now 44 44 right in few years i mean you're not doing bad for a 44 year old guy mm-hmm. but i'm saying you can do better because your competition is with not not with me i'm like 37 turning 38 but you look at sunil chetty anna he's a prime example of how cool yeah. and amazing mm-hmm. somebody at his age can be mm-hmm. every time i look at him i don't have any other expectation from any other 60 year old guy I want everybody to look like him feel like him Mm-hmm. and that's something you cannot buy you know health is something you cannot be born with like you cannot get lucky when it comes to health you can be born into a family with a silver spoon in your mouth and you know you can be born into the riches but that's not going to give you good health mm-hmm. health you have to earn for um, yourself wealth probably you'll get it you'll yeah. you get lucky health you have to do it for yourself i'm saying what choice do you have what choice every other 50 year old guy has out there yeah we In are getting years, older we just have to make sure we keep staying you have two choices yeah. you either take the action or take the walking stick got it i can visualize I don't, no 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 i don't want to visualize myself with a walking stick <laughs> see that that solves all you don't think that you have choices hmm. sometimes you know people live with these different guy they live in this illusion that they have a choice hmm. when they don't we are all going in the same direction everybody feels they'll end up somewhere else or or they'll be an exception yeah never happens everybody is moving in the same direction some people are enjoying the journey some people are effing it up okay once you recognize that we are all going in the same direction then you realize that you don't really have a choice hmm. if you don't really have a choice you do what's necessary and what's necessary is resistance training and taking care of your health amongst all other things yes jc as always a great conversation thank you so much thank you that's it for this episode but i know all of you have a lot of burning questions so here's what i want you to do if you are on instagram do join the broadcast channel you can go to fitter with jc and join the broadcast channel you can ask your questions and trust me it is jc who is answering your questions <laughs> it is not ai <laughs> If you are watching this video on YouTube comment below ask your questions and we'll make sure that the questions reach JC and he yeah. takes them up in a future episode yeah. Also why don't you just go ahead and join our Facebook community or download the Fitter app If you have any questions use the hashtag hashtag #askjc and we will make sure that JC is given these questions and he takes them up in a future episode Till then stay fit keep learning and keep watching the fit up on